Kualitas Dr. Muhammad J. Saleh, ya, mantan uh, pengarah atma yang berusaha ya, membawa uh, Dr. L. Bogat ini untuk datang ke atma untuk berwacana. Ya. Dr. L. Bogat adalah uh, pesarah ataupun uh, sepasak daripada Leiden University. Jadi, kejadian saya perkenalkan uh, uh, Dr. Bogat. Ya. Uh, beliau mendapat ijazah sarjana dalam bidang Germanic Philology and Theatre Science daripada University di Belgium dan dalam bidang Languages and Cultures of Southeast Asia and Oceania uh, daripada uh, uh, Leiden uh, dan uh, di Indonesia beliau telah uh, berada di sana uh, membuat uh, penelitian eh, ataupun kajian dalam bidang Javanese, Bal Balinese and Sundanese Dance and Music di Akademi Seni Tari Indonesia Nah, sekarang di, di, disebut sebagai Institut Seni Indonesia dan juga Javanese Scott Dance with Rama Sasminta Mardawa di pemulangan Beksa Ngayu Yogyakarta ya, di, di Jawa Tengah dan uh, beliau uh, 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 adalah pesarah ya, memberi uh, syarahan di Leiden University daripada tahun 86 hingga 2002 berfokus kepada bahasa Jawa ataupun Javanese language and culture and modern media in, in Indonesia uh, di, 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 di Netherlands juga beliau adalah koordinator uh, kepada beberapa uh, siri program eh, program akademik dan khususnya di Institute of War Documentation ataupun NAYOT di Amsterdam uh, beliau uh, menyelaras ataupun koordinator research program yang disebut sebagai Indonesia Across Uh, orders ya, yeah. uh, reorganization of Indonesian society daripada tahun 1930 hingga 1960 uh, ketika waktu tempoh selama 6 tahun ya, yeah, 2002 hingga 2008 baik sikit lagi mengenai latar belakang beliau beliau adalah uh, juga penulis uh, buku dan juga penyumbang kepada buku uh, penyumbang bersama, penyel, uh, penyunting bersama ya yeah, dalam beberapa volume Uh, penerbitan antaranya ialah uh, With the Indonesian Culture Rethinking Culture in Indonesia in a time of decolonization uh, Beyond Empire and Nation uh, dan beberapa lagi yang lain ya di dalam uh, uh, penerbitan beliau yang banyak ya jadi uh, uh, sebagai seorang peneliti dan juga penulis buku yang banyak ya, termasuklah satu buku The Installation of Prince Mangka Bumi Performing Javanese History uh, Beliau juga uh, sering ya, menjadi pakar rujuk juga dalam hal uh, Javanese Culture on Local Television in Indonesia Jadi tajuk kita hari ini ialah berkenaan dengan uh, Javanese Performance ya, dalam uh, TV dalam television Jadi beliau memulakan uh, penelitian beliau uh, dalam bidang Uh, Indonesia, Indonesian Television as a member of the pioneer program Verbal Art in Audiovisual Media of Indonesia at Leiden University and uh, wrote her dissertation, yeah, this is beliau uh, yang ada hubungan dengan Leiden Institute of Area of Studies jadi uh, untuk tidak melengah masa saya dengan segala rumah persilakan Prof. Muhammad J. Saleh yeah, untuk mengusikan sesi kita pada pagi ini Prof. silakan Prof. Dr. Buhaj, selamat datang ke universiti kami ini yang juga pernah jadi universiti saya. Di sini, di Atma, kita sangat menghargai ilmuwan-ilmuwan dalam bidang kita dari seluruh dunia. Dulu datang ke sini dari Korea, dari China, dari Indonesia tentu saja, dari Thailand dan lain-lain lain. Ini suatu lagi tambahan yang baik untuk Atma dan mungkin kita boleh menggunakan kontak uh, Dr. Bohat supaya dapat dihubungkan di antara dua-dua pusat pengajian Melayu ini. Kita selalu membawa orang dari Malaysia tapi tak selalu dari seberang. Walaupun kita claim bahawa kita ini uh, dunia Melayu kan ya Kerana ada kesempatannya dan orang yang datangnya tak selalu singgah di sini 
Jadi ini peluang yang baik untuk kita bertemu dengan Dr. Bohats yang baru saja mendapat uh, ijazahnya dari Leiden dan beliau mengambil waktu yang panjang kerana ini ruang yang sangat besar dan sangat rumit pula sebab tu datang ke sini dalam kereta kita berbincang-bincang dan ternyata beliau mengetahui dan bercakap dalam lebih daripada lima atau enam bahasa ya? Jawa tentu saja uh, Belanda tentu saja kerana beliau dari Belgium maka beliau mengerti bahasa Flemish tentu saja Perancis ya? lepas itu beberapa dan Jerman dan beberapa bahasa yang lain jadi cuba Bayangkan kita yang satu, tahu satu bahasa pun Dan bahasa itu kita tak bajai dengan baik Jadi saya membawa contoh kepada adik-adik sekalian ini Kebanyakan pelajar ya Contoh untuk uh, menggerakkan menjenasi saudara Supaya boleh belajar daripada beliau Pengalaman beliau Orang seorang, orang dari Belgium Pergi belajar menari ya. Ini penari ini Penari terkenal juga Tak ada waktu nak menari hari ini Nanti, ya. Nanti lain kali kita bawa sebagai penari Dia mengkaji Dan uh, banyak tahu tentang peperangan ini Kerana bekerja dengan War Documentation ya. Museum Di Amsterdam Dan pernah mengajar bahasa Jawa ya. Tinggal di Jawa, Jawa cukup Cukup lama Dan dekat dengan tempe Tapi tidak dekat dengan tahu ya. ya, ya uh, hidup ini adalah sebagai tempe tak ada yang tahu ya. Tak ada yang tahu ya. Okay. Ya, baik. Jadi <coughs> beliau akan uh, membawakan suatu isu di Indonesia yang sama saja dengan kita di sini. Suatu <coughs> bentuk sastralisan satu bentuk naratif tradisional yang diucapkan dituturkan uh, beratus tahun kalau tidak beribu tahun dimasukkan ke TV dengan ada beberapa perubahan dan uh, masalahnya uh, tradisi ini menipis di TV seperti kita di sini kita hampir tak hadir lagi wayang kulit kita mayum kita kerana beberapa hal dan itu juga boleh kita pelajari dari Jawa Jadi dengan itu saya mempersilakan Dr. Bohats Untuk membawa kita kepada masalahnya Dan tolong juga sebut bagaimana kita boleh dapat apa, Iktibat dari apa yang berlaku di Jawa Supaya kita sini cepat sedar Dan tidak terus membuang budaya kita dan seni Dipersilakan. Terima kasih sekali. Selamat pagi. Di dalam warta berita hari ini akan dibahas hasil penelitian Ernst Bogarts asal Belgia yang berjudul Producing the Local Javanese Performance on Indonesian Television. Pertama-tama saya, uh, no, I will continue in English, sorry. Uh, for the discussion we can use You can speak with some Malaysia and I will I'm try to answer in Indonesian, but I will give my presentation in English. Um, I will first give an introduction to the Indonesian television scale before talking about my dissertation to give you an idea because I think the situation of Indonesian television is quite different from uh, the television scape in Malaysia. So first, a little background and then I will return to my topic. 
1962, the first Indonesian television station was launched. It was TVRI, or Televisi Republik Indonesia, Indonesia. A national television station owned by the government, uh, established to voice the policies of the government. After a few years, the several regional branches were um, established, were launched. They were also called TVRI with the name of the region where the station was, uh, was uh, placed. So in 1965, the first regional TVRI station was uh, launched, which was TVRI Station Yogyakarta in the region of Yogyakarta, which is in central Java. And the examples which I will give during my talk uh, mainly come from, not all, but mainly come from Jogjakarta. Uh, and they are Javanese spoken, but I will explain them to you in uh, English. Deviri had a monopoly uh, for more than 25 years. At the end of the 1980s, and between the end of the 1980s and 1995, the Indonesian government allowed five uh, private television stations to be established only five um, because they said uh, there was not enough space uh, for more television stations. The aim of the establishment of the uh, private television stations was to counter voice global influences. Uh, Indonesia was afraid of what they called West Pacification and in order to keep the uh, cultural influences from abroad outside the country they established these private television stations. The owners of these television stations were uh, relatives or cronies, cronies of President Suharto. So uh, the government monopoly changed to a monopoly of the capital, of money, of business. Only in 1997, the first broadcasting law was written, which is quite late. Uh, after 1998, when Suharto resigned, and a new regime was established, which was called the Era Reformasi, the Reform Era, um, there was also uh, the Autonomy Daira, so the regions were given much more autonomy than during the Suharto uh, regime. Uh, many local television stations were established. There was no restriction on the number anymore, so there was a mushrooming of local television stations all over Indonesia, and this is going on until now. So until now, you still have the national TVRI, the regional TVRI stations, private television stations uh, broadcasting nationwide, but cooperating with local TV stations, and then all these local stations focusing on local viewers and local cultures aim of these local television stations was to counter voice the Jakarta hegemony of the private television stations. The television stations which had the monopoly of the capital, so to speak. They aimed at uh, creating a diversity of ownership and a diversity of content and focused on pluralism and on a multicultural Indonesia. And in 2002, a new broadcast casting law was written, which claimed that the broadcasts in Indonesia, all broadcasting should be local, except for the TVRI station, the national station, which is allowed until now to broadcast nationally. But all the other ones are only allowed to broadcast locally. And then another development is from 2012, there is a digital broadcasting, which gave again new opportunities. So if we compare the period of uh, the new order regime, the regime of President Suharto, with the period after 1998, we see that in the new order regime there was a strong central government controlling television, using television to build an Indonesian identity, uh, striving for what they called Satu Nusa, Satu Bangsa, Satu Bahasa. So uh, there was the uh, effort that all Indonesian people would speak Bahasa Indonesia. And um, the, the motto of Indonesia is Bineka Tunggal Ika, which Indonesians usually translate in unity in diversity. 
Now, the Tungal, the unity, the unification of the country was very important at that, in that period. After the stepping down of Suharto, and excuse me, I should write Suharto with O-E, not with the U. I should have corrected this <laughs> in the old spelling. So after 1998, uh, in the era reformasi, uh, there was no still a strong central government, but there was also regional autonomy and a democratization movement, decentralization movement, and a deconcentration. <laughs> the focus was on the regional and local identities within Indonesia, so on the pluriform, pluricultural, multicultural Indonesia. And now the focus is on the Bineka part of the, the, the motto, the pluralism more than on the Tungdal, the unity focus. I hope that's clear to you. And then I go on to my research.
Roberto Cito, yeah, that's what I wanted to ask. If I a would ask you what kind of program this is, what would you answer? Brita, a news program. How do you know it's a news program? It's maybe it's, you think it's a stupid question, but we we don't realize that, right? Because we are used to watching news programs, and the news format is an international format, which in most countries and most cultures has been adapted to the local situation. But we still recognize it as, as news. So part of it has been uh, localized, and part of it, uh, part of the national features of the format have have been kept. Yeah. Um, I ask you this question because yeah, we should think when studying television we don't have to take everything for granted, we have to think of uh, how it works. Uh, so how, how do we recognize uh, what this program actually is because of the formats, because of the intentions, uh, because of the talk, although you don't maybe you don't understand uh, Japanese, but you, you see uh, it's a news talk. Um, you haven't seen images yet, except for this woman, the presenter. But the, the, if we watch the whole program, we see that the presenter is uh, uh, introducing a topic and then we go to uh, an event somewhere there is an report in the field, uh, interview somebody, and then all these features are combined, are edited into the whole news program. If we look at the language, we can ask, why did you say Salam Indonesia uh, as to introduce? to open the news bulletin. Why? And why is the rest in Japanese? Uh, we should also ask what kind of speech style is she using? Uh, yeah, I have to explain about the speech styles in Japanese because that's rather complicated. Uh, as certain television stations choose to uh, adopt a certain sp a specific speech style uh, to express politeness, for example, and other television stations choose more familiar speech styles to express familiarity to the audiences in order to uh, uh, inhibit a kind of proximity. Um, we can look at the costume, what kind of costume is she wearing? Is it traditional? Is it a uh, development of, of tradition or not? Is it a modern creation? Why? Why is she wearing a red and white pin? Uh, red and white is uh, the, Indonesian, the colors of the Indonesian flag all the news readers in this television station, which is Jokta TV, they wear this. Um, the background, what did you see in the background? Uh, Well-known buildings and local landmarks. Why? Uh, they determine the branding of the station and the identity of the station. And there were some advertisements in text uh, uh, of the batik uh, manufacturer, of the dress the lady is wearing. And you saw also the logo of the station. Of course, this all went very well, very quickly, and maybe at the end I will show it again. So the question is, how do people understand the program as it is? And the answer is because it is intended to be as such, to be understood as such, and in both the form and the content of the program, and in the entire context of the broadcasting. Now I need a larger. And this is called communicative intentionality. Excuse me, can I have one large break? Ah, oh, yeah, it's over there. No, no, it's, it's okay, okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, communicative intentionality is um, a concept which is coined by or was coined by Scannell in 1995. And Scannell views television as an ordinary <coughs> event because we watch television every day. Do you still watch television every day? Yes. Or because I see that younger generations don't watch television anymore but are more involved with social media. But people of, until a certain age still watch television every day and it has become part of our everyday life. So we can look at it as an ordinary event, but still it's not an ordinary event, not entirely an ordinary event. Uh, it's an organized event that exhibits a communicative intentionality in all its aspects, linguistic, paralinguistic, and non-linguistic. Um, however, um, broadcasts, 
television programs differ from other social occasions because they are institutional occasions and they are produced for absent listeners and viewers, says Scannell. I don't like so much the term absent because viewers are not absent, they are invisible or they are visible if they are in the program as audiences are communi communicating with performers or in news broadcasts you can be present. But the ones, the people who are watching at home, they are not absent but they are invisible. Now why is it important to study electronic media and in particular television? Television has a dual role in cultural processes. It is simultaneously an observer of culture and it contributes to culture. So it reflects on and contributes to society, actually. Or, to quote Ariel Herianto, no other social institution in Indonesia has arrested public attention on the scale or with the intensity of the electronic media, especially television. Nothing has attracted the number of hours of attention on a daily basis from around one million Indonesians as television programs. This alone won't warrant special investigation. Without it, any understanding of contemporary Indonesia would be seriously flawed. Of course, I have to add, this was written or published in 2008, which is 10 years ago, and the world has changed because of the social media. I have studied Indonesian television and sub-radio for more than 20 years, concentrating on the period between 1988 and 2008, but I also went beyond this period, so I went, I looked at the past and at the present. In doing so, I have realized that television is part of the cultural heritage of Indonesia, a heritage we know we need to know the history of, in order to understand the present and in order to be able to view media used that are used in the present with a critical eye. And it's a heritage we need to foster. So what shall I do today? I shall, shall give a, first intro, a short introduction to my book in which I present my research results. And for the rest of the time, uh, as my book is uh, too, too big actually, too voluminous, for the rest of the time I will tackle some key topics and uh, discuss them while using fragments of performance on television as, as examples. So I shall switch between a more theoretical approach and uh, television practices. And I also shall refer to some literature that has been inspiring to me. And this includes contemporary literature, I've used a lot of contemporary literature, but most of the literature I will refer to today is older one, older literature, because I think that's very important too. We need to know what has been written on television 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and even longer ago. Uh, because it's still valuable. I will focus on um, the production of the local and in particular on persuasive practices. And if there is still some time left, I will also show some examples of localizing strategies. But we'll see. Uh, the central question of my research has been how people make use of national, regional, local, public and private television in Indonesia, each in their own way and with their own goals, to represent the local. In particular, I have tried to discover what mechanisms of representation are in operation and how these people construct images of Japanese through the production and dissemination of performance. And the act of performing reveals meaning because of the people who make the representations and the people who are watching these. And this has to do with the existence of common ground between program makers and between the audiences. And common ground is um, also coined by Scannell. It's a shared competence between the program makers and the audiences which consists of a common cultural linguistic competence, shared knowledges and understandings. And if we don't have a common ground between the producers and the audiences, no meaning will be constructed. My focus is on performance in Japanese, as you may have expected. And I use the term performance in a broad meaning. There's not 
not only uh, in, the, in the meaning of creative arts or theatre, but in a broader meaning. And in this I follow uh, Bauman's uh, definition. Uh, performance usually suggests an aesthetically marked and hated mode of communication, framed in a special way and put on display for an audience. So the ones who are performing, they are aware that there is an audience, and because you are aware that there is an audience, you behave differently, you use a different speech style, and so on, different body languages. A performance is a deliberate effort to represent. And Scannell's idea of communicative intentionality actually approaches Bauman's definition of performance to some degree. I'm focusing on performance in Japanese, language use is very important. So I've, I've paid a lot of attention to uh, language use and analyzed language use in the different uh, television programs which I analyzed. I will come back to this language use uh, later. My focus on televised performance in a broad sense allows me to incorporate a wide variety of television genres, uh, including drama, talk shows, uh, and other entertainment, news bulletins, infotainment, and commercials. The main objective of my study was to explore how television represents japanese as a factor designed to catch and keep the attention of the putative audiences. And its approach is both thematic and chronological. And I found that an interdisciplinary approach and an empirically based method were the most suitable to my materials and my aims. I framed my analysis within performance and media studies, Indonesian studies and cultural anthropology. And I used a lot of sources, uh, television broadcasts, interviews, literature on Indonesian media, articles and essays published in Indonesian newspapers and magazines, uh, letters from audiences written to the uh, television stations, Indonesian legislative texts, scripts, program descriptions, broadcast schedules, and so on and so on, television websites. Uh, a lot. Uh, one of the problems I encountered here was that uh, Indonesian television stations almost do not have any archives. I don't know how the situation is in Malaysia, but in Indonesia there are almost no archives. So it was very, very difficult to obtain uh, materials, to obtain television programs, and you can't study television without programs. And actually the same holds for newspapers. Usually newspapers are stored in uh, Gudan and uh, not kept very well. So uh, fortunately at Leiden University they have microfilms of some newspapers. But very difficult to access. Um, Indonesian uh, researchers themselves, Masduki and Darmanto, they wrote Buruknya Tradisi Dokumentasi di Internal Pengelola RRI, RRI to Radio Republik Indonesia, and TVRI. Televisi Republik Indonesia menjadi salah satu penyebab minimnya literatur terkait. Era keterbukaan data dan akses informasi publik rupanya belum direspon proaktif. So what I did resembles archaeology televisi sebetulnya. Betul-betul menggali sedikit demi sedikit, makanya lama. Uh, my book consists of three parts. representing tradition, localizing persuasion, and mediating the uh, Each theme, each part required a different approach. My rationale for choosing this threefold approach is my own curiosity to discover how research into television from different angles would generate specific outcomes. And when made into a compilation, this would lead into a, a mosaic. And I think the form of a mosaic uh, very much suits uh, the character of television, because television is also very dynamic and very fragmented. Uh, so the mo a mosaic form suits this, according to me, uh, suits the, the character of television. Or maybe a hybrid text would also suit the character of television better than 
than a book. Because in a book, we like write in a linear way, and television is not linear at all. So the first part is focused on the televising of one specific performer genre that is categorized as traditional. And that genre is Ketopra. Uh, and I don't know whether you know Ketopra. Uh, Have you ever heard about it, seen it, watched it? It's um, a dramatic genre which uh, started in the beginning of the last century, maybe even the end of the century before that. And it became a rural, uh, a rural popular dramatic genre in the course of time. My study begins with an analysis of how the regional government station TVRI Station Jokjakarta represents tradition, and then focusing on the Dobra. And I put it in the context of discussions about tradition and culture during the New Order period, the Suhaka period, because tradition was discussed very, very much during that period. And the Suharto government tried to, what they said, malastarikan kebudayaan, malastarikan tradisi. They, they had a policy to uh, uh, yeah, support people yeah, for cons conservation of traditional culture. But I argue that a regional television station in Jakarta did more just than just implementing government policies in its broadcasting. They benefited from producers who often were performing artists themselves, or budayawan. Budayawan is a term known here, yeah. yeah? And they were inspired by and built on local performance genres. So they had a lot of input from the surrounding uh, culture. And they developed their own performance styles uh, which only occurred on television, which did not exist outside of television, and new television genres. So they were rather creative, I think. Although dominated by the government, they were very uh, creative. Uh, tradition, in this period, a frequently discussed topic. Um, on television was interpreted in multiple ways and obtained a flexible character. So it was not fixed in homes and rules, but it was very flexible. And it was an, the open attitude of the television station towards innovation and the desire to keep pace with developments that uh, became a means to preserve traditional performance arts. Uh, I won't discuss this topic further because I will have to go into uh, several genres which were developed on television and that will become too complicated. <coughs> In the second part, the spotlight turns to the contributing agents involved in the mediation processes for persuasive purposes, and I will give some examples later. Now, who are the agents? Actors, audiences, legislators, media practitioners, sponsors, media watchers, and media owners, television institutions, and so on. I can go on for a long time. Analysis of the agents reveals the amalgam of messages, narratives, and ideologies as these are integrated in the program flow. And program flow is a concept of Raymond Williams. He says that um, a serial is not what we think a serial is, consisting of several episodes, but a real series in television is the, the serial these different episodes combined with trailers, advertisements, inside advertising of television stations and so on. So when studying television, we should not only look at one specific, what we think of as a program, but at the whole uh, the, the broadcasting of an entire day or, or a week or a month um, in order to be able to understand it well and in order to be able to find the agent's presence because many agents are present and uh, they all have their own messages and narratives and this brings or realizes this mosaic I was talking about. Um, the third part, mediating the local, 
focuses on localizing strategies and the alliances in which local broadcasters engage. So local broadcasters, especially from the year 2000, 2002 onwards, they um, had to find content or to create content all the time and as there is so much competition uh, among all these local television stations. They are in need of content but also in need of sponsorship, sponsors of money. Uh, in order to, to obtain content and uh, funding, they have engaged with uh, local artists, with local enterprises, but also with local politicians, uh, local parties, political parties, and so on. Um, more on this topic later. The main concepts, the key, key concepts which came to the surface while doing research are the local proximity and tradition. They frame my analysis, just to analysis of the whole book. Uh, the local has been a very prominent in the issue in Indonesian government policy, legislation and discourse regarding the electronic media. Whereas during the new order uh, regime, the tradition was very much an issue and of the country and the national. From the reform era onwards, the local became an issue, which was discussed in newspapers, in fora, uh, among Budayawan, uh, and so on. Um, in this course about, about television programming, local meant had a lot of meanings. Uh, it meant not foreign, but domestic or national. But it could also mean regional and it could also mean sub-regional. So when studying the local, we really have to look at the context. What's meant here? Domestic, national, uh, sub-national, sub-regional, sub-regional, and so on. Um, to define the local, I started from the concept which was defined by uh, Arjun Apadurai. He said he viewed the local as a complex phenomenological quality constituted by a series of links between the sense of social immediacy, the technologies of interactivity, and the relativity of contexts. I followed his definition of the local. I call it the local, he calls it locality, and both the terms have their problems, I acknowledge, but I prefer the local. He views the local as primary, primarily relational and contextual rather than a scalar or spatial. And um, I did not so much agree to this, uh, as conditions have changed since Abadurai uh, did his research. So we should re therefore reconsider his view. He developed his ideas on the basis of research conducted in the 1990s, when the globalizing effects on the media dominated academic discourse in anthropology and cultural studies. And the greatest emphasis at the time was given to the effects of media technology and to their potential to enable and stir the emergence of communities that were set to transcend physical space. So they got uh, loose from physical space, geographical space, um, causing the local to be no longer the prime reference of our experience. Uh, he was focusing on globalizing effects on people uh, migrating all over the world. Uh, but while globalization has altered the relationships between local discourses and geographical spaces, those discourses have not completely been uprooted uh, from specific locations. Uh, I discovered that, that space and scale still do play an important role and maybe even an increasingly important role uh, if not actually, then certainly ideologically, emotionally, and or in this course. The last three or four decades worldwide, the regional and the local have become much more prominent, not only politically, but also culturally. And it's, um, some researchers say that this uh, attention to the local nowadays is caused by the globalizing uh, process. So now I will go to the local 
in persuasive practices. And I shall give a few examples. One example is of Indosier, which was the last uh, private television station with, which was established in 1995, the last of the first five private television stations in Indonesia. Um, the end of the 1980s, when these private television stations were established, they saw an, a significant, significant economic growth. And both government television and the new private broadcasters, they turned to Japanese performance for informative, persuasive, and propaganda ends. And we can ask the question, why Java? Because Indonesia is so large and there are so many ethnic communities and so many islands. In what was called the Era Informasi Global, Java had been an, become an important locale, both for its <coughs> cultural resources uh, that provided the television stations with interesting uh, materials, but also for the Japanese, the people, which was the demographically largest minority group in Indonesia and the largest identifiable target group for marketing purposes. And for this, Java was called Ladang Mas. So they thought, Java, lots of people, we can sell our commercials and our products, Bridge. That's why uh, Javanese performances were used um, to attract people to television. Because as audiences, we have to play the role of being an audience. And there have to be some incentives to attract us to the screen and to sit down and not only sit down, but also watch and keep on watching. And uh, these Javanese, uh, traditional Javanese performances were used to, to catch the attention of audiences. In also used Balinese performances, Sudanese, West Germanese performances, and Batak uh, from Sumatra, uh, Batak songs, uh, but that was all, that's, that was their view on Indonesian uh, traditional culture. I will come back to this later. Um, I talked about the agents first uh, when I started, and um, if we look at television, uh, we have to find the varying narratives, genres, appeals, and modes of address, and we can find them by studying these agents. Yes, now I will, I think I need some help. to what, yeah, also, but you don't have to understand it, but the, 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 the image, does it say something to you? So when audiences, in Indonesian audiences and especially Japanese audiences watch television and they see this, they think, when they just switch on the television and they, they watch this, they say, oh yes, I'm in the midst of a <coughs> why I call it performance. But this is what they get. Mm -hmm. 
I'm sorry, it used to function when I was doing this in Indonesia. Yeah. <laughs> promoted in a series of mini performances, all similarly structured. And they all played on the same topic and approach and were centered on the protagonist and television star Imatip Sudarsono, the puppeteer. He was a very, very famous television puppeteer at the time. He's still very famous. Until now. Until now. And the Oscar Don uh, uh, commercial has been reproduced in different forms, but always he was always the, the main character in the, in the commercial until a few years ago. And this commercial exemplifies the use of uh, television performers as themselves or in, in their character parts to recommend products or to be uh, shown using these products. And it's a well known technique in advertising. And the puppeteer here is Mantop, and he plays himself. And he acts as Mantop on television, in a typically televisual manner. And usually this advertisement was broadcast in a broadcast of Wayankulit. So you have Wayankulit, the Wayankulit performance, and then suddenly this advertisement appeared. And it made, of course audiences are not stupid at all, but for a few seconds uh, you got the impression that there was a blurring of genres commercial with the Hawaiian Colin performance because they used the Hawaiian Colin setting for the commercial. Um, this was a very, very popular advertisement and everybody at the time who watched this uh, traditional Japanese performance genres knew it. Now I will, because we have to look at the flow, the program flow, I will show a larger part of the flow with the same advertisement.
So you see a little bit more of the context which makes, makes our idea of this Oskadon commercial maybe uh, it influences our idea of the Oskadon commercial. Now Oskadon in this context uh, it was not uh, put in a way in public performance or broadcast in a way in public performance but in uh, what's called Dagalang, Dagalang which, uh, which is a comic uh, performance uh, and it's followed by the Inumi commercial during the month of the fasting of the Ramadan. And analyzing this flow, we could ask questions related to who are the agents and what narratives do they voice. And the narratives can be, vo can be voiced in the text, but of course also in the images and in the sounds. Uh, what are the views on tradition and how is tradition used? How are the persuasive messages constructed? Another question is, what does localizing mean here? Um, what about the language, um, the code switching? In the Oscar uh, advertisement, there is code switching. We get the impression that Javanese is spoken, but only a few words are in Javanese, and the rest is in Indonesian with a Javanese accent. But because the whole atmosphere is Javanese, it seems like they are speaking Javanese the whole time. Another question is how the familiar is played on. Uh, people are familiar, were familiar at the time with Wayanguri performances. Um, of course, the whole setting of the Indomi uh, commercial is also a very familiar setting. Uh, during the fasting month, what do people eat uh, for sour, uh, for breakfast? Here in the it's uh, How to, do we have to interpret the flow? Another question. And what kind of audiences are imagined by the people who make this production? Uh, what kind of audiences are targeted, are imagined, are constructed? Um, in this case, when the, the commercial was broadcast in a uh, comic performance, there was no genre blurring, but the link to tradition was still there. And the Javanese linguistic context, of course, uh, is uh, similar. In um, the Indomie commercial, does not only tell us about the audiences uh, the station was focusing on, but also tells us something about the owner. Because Indosiar uh, was part of the Salim conglomerate, uh, Lim Siu Leong, a Chinese uh, owner of a huge, huge conglomerate, uh, having enterprises and all kinds of businesses, including media including Indomie. So several kinds of products starting with Indo, Indosia, Indomie, Indosemen, and so on, were part of this conglomerate. And Indosia, of course, broadcast lots of uh, products, uh, commercials of products of the uh, Salim group. It's very important to know who the owners are of uh, television stations, because their narratives, they enter in many, in many ways in, in the broadcasts. And yeah, we should know that. Now, Indosia did not only try to persuade Japanese audiences with its localized commercials, it framed the traditional uh, performing arts genres uh, in the context of preserving the culture of the nation, Mulestarik and Budaya Bansa. So with this discourse in Mulestarik and Budaya Bansa, they introduced a new discourse into the rhetoric of private television. Um, doing so, actually their focus, no, their, their view on Indonesian culture is very limited. As I said before, they broadcast Javanese performances, Balinese, Sundanese, and Batak, and that was all, and the rest of Indonesia did not get any attention. So uh, the representation of the Javanese local was very limited and stereotyped. It was kind of exoticizing uh, Javanese culture, actually, Javanese, Balinese, Sundanese culture. And because of this limited scope, Indusian was accused of uh, Javanizing, Manjawa. But in fact, the total amount of Javanese programming is very, very small in comparison to the uh, broadcasting in Indonesia. But still, they obtained a lot of attention. 
because of this focus, in the CN has set a trend for other broadcasters who copied the formula or they developed new uh, TV genres inspired by traditional genres and foreign genres. <coughs> like Toprak uh, Umur, which was inspired by the traditional Toprak, this uh, urban popular genre, which was made into a comic serial and became a certain type of However, for Indusia, the success of its Japanese, its Japanese programming was not reflected in the ratings or in an equal profit from advertising revenues. So, after the monetary and economic crisis in 1997-1998, <coughs> private broadcasters abandoned the regular broadcasting of the more traditional performance genres. They abandoned it entirely. And when they kept in their programming, and they kept in the program still until now, it's comedy with links to traditional performance genres. So, nothing of this anymore on commercial television stations, on the big commercial television stations. And now I will give a few examples or show a few examples of uh, a development program which is called Banyan Desa. Bagundesa, developing the village. Initially, it was um, what was called in Indonesia a uh, program penyuluan, um, meant to inform people living in rural areas on how to plant rice, uh, how to keep fish, how to live uh, in a hygienic way, and so on and so on. And it was very patronizing. So, after many years, people did not like to watch this anymore. And one of the producers had an idea. The program was produced also by the Station to Takata. One of the producers had an idea. He uh, invited actors of a famous theater group, Gandhi, a group is, which is until now is still very popular. He invited some actors to uh, join the, 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 the team. Song. And one of his actors, he was very clever in writing scripts because he wrote the scripts for the theater group as well. So now he started writing the scripts for the Bagundeso television production. And from an informative program, it became kind of infotainment. And the people at the time liked it, liked to watch it very much because it, had, it was funny, there was humor, there was suspense, there was a lot of local culture inside, so a lot of uh, familiar context. And they liked the characters who performed the stories, and while performing the stories, uh, disseminated the information. At first government information, but later also uh, local government information and information <coughs> uh, disseminated by NGOs. Um, because of this kind of representation, uh, and because of the familiar, the series became very attractive. Uh, but it caused also the entertainment, entertainment character to prevail over the information. So people watched it because they, they liked it, because it was funny and there was suspense, but not because of the information. Always some people still appreciate it. Um, again, here common ground was very important, the presence of common ground. And because of this common ground between the producers and the audiences, um, the series was able to develop uh, what in Indonesia is called Akra. Uh, closeness, familiarity, yeah. Uh, between the audiences, between uh, the main characters of the series and between and their adventures. Um, so television made information into infotainment. And what happened was that the characters, the five main characters playing in this uh, series, they became so popular that even beyond the series, in ordinary events in everyday life or when they gave presentations somewhere, up to now, even they are called by their 
character names, not by their real names. So they remain characters on Bangladesh up to now. That's actually it's the same um, the same thing that happened with the Oscadon Oscadon commercial. It continued live uh, even beyond television, and these characters they remain Bangladesh of characters even beyond television. Television can be uh, can have a strong uh, influence. Uh, the narration in Bangladesh was uh, carried by spoken dialogues more than by the images, actually. In their daily conversations, the Bangladesh villagers used villages. They used the Japanese vernacular. And usually they used, uh, they did not use a standard Japanese, standard Japanese, which is uh, mostly promoted in Japanese language congresses and at schools and in official environments. Uh, the standard Japanese, which is used in uh, the cities of Jakarta and Surakarta, which has become the standard of Japanese. But the characters in Bangladesh did not usually not speak this standard Japanese, but usually spoke more familiar, oh yeah, excuse me, spoke more familiar type of Japanese in order to uh, become closer to the audiences, of course and in order to suggest an everyday rural atmosphere. But also, Bata um, Prokan, which is a Jakartan youth language, was, in, uh, was used, and slang and reversed speech. Basa Walian, I don't know whether in Malaysia you have Basa Walian. Uh, it's a kind of youth speech. Um, in Javanese, uh, people reverse the words. When they speak, they start from the last letter until the, the front, so they reverse the words. And young people, when they use basawali, and they understand each other. But if you don't know the procedures and the techniques, you won't understand anything. Uh, yes, but in Malang, in the, the city of Malang, it's very popular, and also older, elder, yeah, older people who learned it when they were students, they still speak it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's funny. <laughs> it's a kind of. Um, in crowd language, actually, yeah, 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 a secret language. That's right. Yeah. So if you don't know the procedure, you don't, you don't understand. Um, this language used in Bangladesh. So it's important that they did not uh, use a standard Japanese, which is so much promoted all the time. Uh, lots of Japanese people nowadays say they don't speak Japanese anymore, meaning they don't speak the standard, the high, what they say, hi, I belong to Japanese anymore. Um, and Japanese was also used to translate government legislation into conversational uh, local language and to represent government discourse. So the original message of the information was usually spoken in Indonesian. And often the, um, the text of the Unanguna, the legis legislative text, was spoken in Indonesian, and then the wise man of the village, he translated it to uh, local Japanese for the villagers to make it understandable. So I will give some examples, if it works. Oh, yes. Um, in 2006, there was a series of six episodes uh, focusing on the equality be between men and women. And the background of the six episodes was a Japanese wedding, a traditional Japanese wedding. The main character, um, his wife had passed away. Actually, the actress playing, performing this uh, role she had to leave because of other uh, other work, so they had to find another woman, and they made it into a story that he had to. He was getting married for the second time. Um, so that was the background of the six episodes, the traditional wedding, which was performed in a village. So the villagers they played their roles as villagers, and they were in the series as well, and they liked it very much. Now, uh, part of the Javanese, traditional Javanese ceremony, uh, wedding ceremony, is the washing of the foot of the man. The woman washes the foot of the man. And this series was about equality between men and women. 
So uh, this was discussed, but not discussed directly, but in a story. And the little girl sitting with her grandmother, Mighty, she, after having watched this ceremony of the bride, washing the foot of the bridegroom, she asks her grandmother, why is, he, is she washing his foot and did he not wash her foot? And the grandmother explains the tradition and the meaning of the ceremony, and she says, but I don't want to, this to happen to me. Later, when I will get married, I want my husband to do the same to me. <laughs> or, if this is not going to happen, no washing of the feet at all. No, no, that, she doesn't say so. She, we will skip that part of the ceremony. She said. Yeah. And then the children, uh, they are playing in the village and they reenact the wedding ceremony. And now I need your help again. <laughs> Um, the girl, yeah, I will, I will translate it afterwards. She becomes very angry. You will hear that. <coughs> yeah, I should have used my own uh, laptop. Uh, then. So uh, the, the, the children are reenacting reenac the wedding ceremony and uh, the washing of the, the foot. So the, the girl who was discussing this item with her grandmother, she washes the foot of her bridegroom, her friend. And then she says, you, now you have to do this with me. And he refuses because he says, no, no, it's not part of the tradition. And then she becomes very angry. So what is the meaning of washing the world? Yeah, the dedication of the wife to the, to the husband. And, yeah. oh. If you open the maybe you can find a link. My apologies. This is the wise man of the village and together with another villager they were watching the children and he says, yes, the girl is right. If uh, she has to wash his food, then he has to do the same to her. Uh, this is part of the information, of course, of the NGO. Right? And then maybe I will show a last fragment uh, in which you can hear how the uh, legislation, it's Unang uh, Unang Perkawinan, uh, just a few phrases of the Undang Undang Perkawinan in Indonesian, how it is uh, translated uh, in, in Japanese. 
Japanese culture, but um, also to present uh, culture, cultural features to uh, younger generations, uh, to make it known to them. And, but it also addressed feelings of nostalgia. Nostalgia was very important. Um, but it also enabled identification, of course. And it's easier when we identify with something what we see, then we are more open to to receive a message. Then we don't understand what is happening now. Um, so also Bangundeso consisted of a variety of issues, positions, voices, and messages. I have not shown all of them. Uh, it will take many hours. <laughs> but uh, it demonstrates that we should look into the agents that are involved in, uh, in the programming and in the flow of the programs, the agents who contribute to the series, to find out the dynamics of television how television works and what it's trying to convey to us. Uh, as I've said before, the series was very popular. And up to now, if I talk to people in Indonesia about this series, they say, oh, I'm this and they start talking about the characters, about the uh, adventures they saw, and so on. So it has become part of the collective memory of people of a certain generation because of its local character. So I think I will stop here, and if you would like to see more uh, fragments later, I can show them. But maybe, yeah, it's time to to enter into discussion. Oh, yeah, Magiliat uh, lagi, yeah. Jogja TV sangat terikat dengan keraton Jogja. Uh, 
karena komisaris utamanya memang uh, adiknya Sri Sultan Hamengkubuwono ke-10 dari Keraton Jogja. Um, tidak hanya secara ekonomi ada ikatan tapi juga secara kebudayaan. Jadi mereka di dalam identitas mereka sangat uh, memperlihatkan ciri khas Yogyakarta uh, yaitu bangunan uh, di sebelah kiri bangunan tubuh Tugu berada di antara Gunung Merapi, uh, Gunung Merapi, Tugu, Keraton, dan Laut Selatan. Itu satu garis dan di dalam mitologi Jawa memerankan peranan penting. Uh, bangunan di belakang uh, presenter, news presenter, news reader itu uh, dari Keraton dan yang di sebelah kanan itu Kerapia juga bangunan uh, bersejarah. Nah, di sini juga lagi muncul uh, tubuh. Dan uh, pasangan uh, di keraton ada prajurit keraton yang berbagai regu. Kumpulan yang mempunyai uh, kostum bermacam-macam, ada campur Jawa dan Belanda, dan itu ciri khas Jogja juga, yang tradisional. Saya terlupa bahwa saya jadi pengurusi juga Saya juga menonton ini Dan bersayap kembali kepada nostalgia Saya sewaktu naik sepeda tahun 68 Di sawah-sawah di Jogja Dan berhenti di rumah peladang yang miskin Hanya mempunyai lantai tanah pada waktu itu Tidak berapa di sekarang sudah banyak perubahan um, tapi banyak hal yang dikumpulkan oleh Dr. Bokas yang kita tak pikirkan di Malaysia ini jadi kalau di antara iklan dengan cerita biasanya kita tak banyak menggunakan ini dan malah kita tak banyak menggunakan unsur tradisi ini mainkan dalam lagu kan? dalam lagu dan sedikit tarian yang lain semua sudah hilang jadi uh, kita boleh Uh, Semulakan uh, pertanyaan-pertanyaan yang ingin ditimbulkan dan saya ingin memulakan apakah sebenarnya televisyen menghidupkan kembali betul-betul uh, lama ini atau mempergunakan betul lama ini untuk keuntungan keuntungan mereka saja, Ustaz. Um. Nah, itu pertanyaan yang sangat menarik sekali. Memang um, pemerintah Orde Baru Soeharto menggunakan atau mempergunakan kesenian tradisional untuk menyiarkan polisi-polisi uh, uh, messages dari uh, pemerintah itu. Misalnya uh, family planning atau rekuasasi atau apa saja atau kesatuan dan persatuan Indonesia, penggunaan bahasa Indonesia dan sebagainya itu disampaikan melalui program-program uh, wayang kulit ketoprak dan berbagai jenis kesenian yang lain. Oleh televisi swasta tentu saja juga dipergunakan, tapi seperti Indonesia uh, mempresikan presentasikannya di dalam uh, diskursus uh, di dalam wacana melestarikan budaya nasional padahal mereka hanya mempergunakannya untuk mendapatkan untung untuk uh, menyampaikan iklan sebetulnya uh, biasanya TVRI uh, dari Regio uh, Regional TVRI uh, mereka peduli terhadap uh, kebudayaan lokal dan suka merekam pementasan mana-mana dan disiarkan secara langsung atau tidak langsung atau grup-grup tertentu diundang ke studio untuk uh, berpentas di studio dengan atau tanpa penonton dan itu lebih untuk melestarikan kebudayaan.
kebudayaan. Tapi makin lama makin susah di sana juga. Ya. Malah TVRI Jogja sendiri waktu dulu waktu mulai menyiarkan warta berita di dalam bahasa Jawa memilih bahasa Jawa yang sopan, bosok romo, karena mereka bilang bahwa uh, audiens kami tidak ingin disapa di dalam bahasa yang terlalu akrab, harus yang sopan, karena lama kelamaan anak muda meninggalkan TVRI Jogja, mereka sekarang mulai menyiarkan di dalam bahasa yang lebih akrab, dan malah station identifier nanti saya bisa menunjukkan ada yang berbentuk rap, hip hop. Jadi lain sekali daripada, ya nanti pada akhir ini akan saya tunjukkan itu, lucu. Saya dulu salah, Dokter. Yang pertama tentang penelitian, Dokter, tentang K-pop daripada suara untuk berpaksa informasi yang di dunia sekarang. Adakah perubahan dari segera persembahan dalam TV itu berubah? Dan sebelum, terlalu mungkin saya tidak tahu, Dokter, saya tidak tidak, tapi Pas informasi itu ada satu perubahan perubahan yang plastik pada Oke, nomor dua Tentang polisi ini Banyak station channel yang swasta yeah. yang private yeah. Adakah mereka juga tertakluk kepada polisi Melestarikan budaya di Indonesia ini? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Coba yang pertama lagi. Yang pertama tentang reformasi. Oh ya, 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 ya. Perubahan ya. dalam ya. Uh, ya, kalau kita memperhatikan ke representasi kebudayaan lokal, uh, ada perubahan besar. Uh, kalau kita bandingkan uh, era sesudah zaman reformasi dan era Soeharto itu, uh, sekarang jauh lebih banyak uh, kebudayaan lokal yang sangat lokal disiarkan melalui televisi lokal itu berarti juga bahasa lokal dulu hanya bahasa Indonesia ya atau bahasa standar lokal tapi sekarang uh, ada dialek dialek lokal uh, juga bahasa anak-anak muda digunakan dan uh, fenomena lokal yang lokalitasnya sangat kecil sekali malah muncul di televisi dulu tidak begitu jadi pluriformitas sudah lebih banyak tapi Audiens di Indonesia belum puas. Waktu saya mengajar di Universitas Universitas di Yogyakarta kemarin minggu yang lalu, kebanyakan mahasiswa mengatakan kok kebudayaan kontemporer kami yang lokal tidak di tidak dipertontonkan di televisi. Kami merasa tidak terwakili di dalam wacana televisi. Kami harus bagaimana? Itu saya bilang yang tidak harus bagaimana. Apa tidak ada keharusan? Tapi bisa menulis ke koran, ke surat kabar, atau bisa membuat acara televisi sendiri atau mendekati stasiun televisi atau malah menggunakan media yang lain mungkin yeah. media sosial karena media sosial jauh lebih demokratis daripada televisi sebetulnya ya yeah. tapi mereka juga ya tidak puas uh, waktu dulu banyak sekali orang yang merasa kebudayaan mereka dan identitas mereka tidak terwakili di televisi sekarang sudah jauh lebih banyak tapi masih banyak yang belum terwakili juga dan tentang media sosial ya uh, hanya sebagian dari penduduk Indonesia bisa mengakses media sosial uh, apa di daerah di daerah pedesaan di pelosok-pelosok yang jauh-jauh ya dan orang miskin juga tidak mempunyai akses terhadap media sosial jadi demokratisasi itu belum merata kemana-mana juga yang kedua tentang polisi Fashion Kota atau buat private tu harus juga memenuhi syarat-syarat untuk memaparkan termasuk pakai kacang, image. Di dalam undang-undang penyiaran dibedakan antara televisi nasional, televisi swasta, televisi komunitas, community television dan televisi kabel dan ada ketentuan baru bermacam-macam. Tapi misalnya memakai pin merah putih itu tidak wajib. Itu pilihan uh, Jogja TV karena mereka bilang kami memang uh, stasiun televisi lokal berada di Yogyakarta, ciri khas identitas kami lokal. Tapi kami termasuk bangsa Indonesia. Uh, itu nasionalitas kami dan itu harus dilihat diperlihatkan di dalam 
wacana kami juga. Jadi identitas mereka ada bermacam-macam ya, lokal, Jawa, terikat dengan keraton, uh, tapi juga nasional dan nasional itu, nasionalitas itu tetap ditekankan juga. Tapi tidak dimasukkan di dalam uh, undang-undang penyiaran yang dibicarakan di dalam undang-undang penyiaran antara lain juga penggunaan bahasa mereka mengatakan bahwa uh, setiap program harus disiarkan di dalam bahasa Indonesia uh, hanya kecuali kalau program sendiri memerlukan bahasa lokal boleh menggunakan bahasa lokal tapi harus sebetulnya harus diberi subtitling supaya orang yang tidak berbahasa Jawa atau Sunda atau Batak atau apa bisa mengertinya tapi televisi lokal tidak melakukannya tidak memberi subtitling Uh, ya. Tapi ya, ada bermacam-macam ketentuan juga untuk iklan dan berbagai Nah, saya dengar bahwa sekarang sedang dirancang undang-undang penyiaran baru lagi karena yang dari tahun 2002 sudah tidak sesuai dengan kenyataan. Ya, jadi mungkin beberapa tahun lagi akan dirancang lagi. Dan sekarang bukan hanya pemerintah yang terlibat, tapi juga orang televisi sendiri dan banyak budayawan yang membuat kelompok dan mereka memberi masukan kepada pemerintah supaya undang-undang lebih cocok dengan zaman sekarang. Ya. Okay. 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 Ada pandangan soalan pelajar komunikasi di sini. Ada pelajar komunikasi? Ada. 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 Saya malu ya. <laughs> Bahasa Inggris juga boleh. Dokter, saya bertanya. Uh, saya adalah mengenai uh, research yang uh, doktor jalankan ni memang ada satu jangka masa yang agak lama berbanding dengan apa yang ada hari ini. Yeah. Jadi, bila kita lihat um, metode ataupun kaedah yang digunakan oleh apa? kaedah yang digunakan oleh stesen uh, TV di Indonesia itu dalam mengangkat warisan uh, di Jawa itu saya nampak pada hari ini juga digunakan oleh beberapa negara lain uh, Saya tak pasti siapa yang mengikut siapa Sampai ada mereka mengikut Indonesia Ataupun benda ini adalah satu identiti global Ataupun universal Di mana uh, mereka mengangkat uh, subjek apa tu, uh, Warisan itu dalam komisial Dalam apa tu, menggunakan selebriti uh, Sebagai apa, menarik minat uh, penonton Untuk mendapatkan mesej yang ada dalam uh, sesuatu rancangan di televisyen. Jadi uh, soalan saya pada doktor adalah uh, pada doktor dalam kajian itu adakah ia berkesan dalam uh, menyuburkan jati diri uh, penonton melalui kaedah kita? Ya, pada kaedah. Bila kaedah efektif. Ha. Um Ya, seperti yang saya katakan tadi, usaha-usaha Indonesia untuk mendekati penonton dengan uh, kebudayaan tradisional tidak berhasil karena uh, pendapatan dari iklan itu ter tetap sedikit sehingga mereka akhirnya berhenti melakukan itu. Um, pada saat ini masih Lokalitas itu masih kuat, tapi identitas global juga kuat dan identitas nasional juga kuat. Jadi itu bercampur dan tiga-tiga tiganya apa mungkin berkelahi untuk mendapat peran yang paling penting. Tapi televisi lokal masih menekankan budaya uh, lokal, penggunaan bahasa lokal. Apakah uh, orang menontonnya itu hal yang lain. Jadi orang muda sekarang sudah meninggalkan televisi. Ada penelitian di, oleh televisi uh, TVRI Yogyakarta yang menyatakan bahwa uh, audiensnya hanya di 40 tahun ke atas umurnya dan di bawahnya sudah cara menonton TV. Jadi efektif, efektivitasnya <tuh> sudah berkurang sekali. Hmm. Ya, tapi kalau saya karena saya juga mempelajari apa yang terjadi pada saat ini. Kalau melihat di media sosial, banyak sekali ada lokalisasi uh, bermacam-macam. Uh, misalnya Harry Potter, itu di 
bahasa, penggunaan bahasa Inggris itu dialihkan ke bahasa Jawa dan dengan menjawakannya ditambah satu um, level baru karena mereka mengubah ceritanya dengan memasukkannya yang lucu-lucu tapi kalau kita menonton ya kita melihat gambar yang visual itu Harry Potter uh, wacana itu di dalam bahasa Jawa dan bahasa Jawa uh, yang akrab dan familiar dan ada banyak yang ditambah di situ jadi menjadi lucu sekali itu satu contoh saja jadi um, ya lokalitas masih masih tetap hadir dan uh, tradisi juga masih tetap hadir tapi makin lama makin sedikit tradisi itu ada satu rencana di mereka yang yang popular di Indonesia upit ipit saya tidak tahu ada tempat terjemahan bahasa Jawa di mana. Ya, saya kurang tahu. Mungkin ada. Mungkin <laughs> ya. Apa anak-anak muda di sana sangat super kreatif sekali di media sosial dan memasukkan macam-macam di YouTube atau di mana di Facebook. Ya. Ya, ada orang lain. Saya tidak mempelajari media sosial. Saya hanya memperhatikannya karena saya kira menarik sekali apa yang terjadi di situ. Ya, tapi ada beberapa orang di beberapa tempat yang mempelajari media sosial di Indonesia secara mendalam. Ya. Ada lagi, Ilya? Ada animasi untuk cerita-cerita Jawa ini? Uh, ya, dulu Bandung Deso mau dianimasikan dan sudah dibuat uh, trial tapi akhirnya tidak jadi karena terlalu mahal sebetulnya uh, budget yang mereka gunakan hanya kecil sekali dan hasilnya lumayan bagus sebetulnya karena kalau saya melihat acara penyuluhan yang sekarang disiarkan oleh televisi lokal uh, TVRI lokal di Indonesia butuhnya jauh di bawah bangun desa sebetulnya Bangun Deso di Google, saya kira tidak ada, tapi yang baru ada di Google. Ya. So, namanya Sabah Desa, Sobo Deso. Ya. Sebagian di dalam bahasa Indonesia, sebagian di dalam bahasa Jawa, tapi mereka kembali ke um, sifat patronizing itu. Jadi kembali ke zaman dulu sebetulnya. Terlalu mengarahi uh, untuk orang-orang pedesaan harus begini, supaya begini. Bangun Deso jauh lebih bagus. Boleh kita tengok video red red. Oh boleh, ya. Jadi TVRI Stasiun Yogyakarta uh, dulu uh, menyapa audiens dengan bahasa Jawa sopan uh, dan juga mereka juga image mereka terikat dengan keraton juga dengan kebudayaan keraton dengan tari-tari klasik. Uh, <tuh> tapi karena ditinggal audiens mereka membuat uh, station identifier yang baru dan yang saya tunjukkan ini nanti dari uh, satu setengah tahun yang lalu ini bentuk rap atau hip hop nah ini dikembangkan lagi seperti Oscar Don Commercial juga ada versi dangdut dangdut tahu di sini versi dangdut ada versi uh, rock ada versi blues ada versi macam-macam nah ini versi hip hop dan oh mungkin saya bisa Permintaan dari orang di bawah 40 tahun. Mudah-mudahan <laughs> muncul ya. Wow. Terlalu lama dia menjadi harus dihidupkan lagi. Yang ditonton ya itu seorang uh, turis perempuan yang datang di Yogyakarta dan dia mengambil selfie di mana-mana dan dia diajak teman-teman orang Jogja untuk uh, main ke TVRI, ke stasiun TVRI, terus pergi makan bersama-sama di Tugu, Tugu Tower itu, Tower Putih itu, makan gudeg, makanan khas Yogyakarta, terus kita melihat pelajar uh, dan yang dikatakan di, di Jogja terdapat apapun kita bisa belajar di sana, bisa makan yang enak, bisa main ke mana-mana. Um, 
ka aking chukot. So, kaya sa kaya sa mga mga tanong na huwag. Dan, referenya Teferi Jogja Pancen Istimewa. Teferi Jogja memang istimewa. Itu ada hubungan dengan keadaan politik daerah istimewa Yogyakarta. Slogannya Yogyakarta tetap istimewa. Karena pemerintah Indonesia ingin menghapus keistimewaannya, status keistimewaan Yogyakarta. Nah, Sultan Yogyakarta dan sebagian dari penduduk tidak ingin itu terhapus. Jadi itu dipromosikan melalui lagu hip hop dan macam-macam. Jadi ada hubungan dengan politik lokal juga. Ini dari 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 gaya komen. Kini yang dia WFH. Stasiun nasional, TVR nasional, dan dulu setiap daerah mempunyai TVR di bawah yang nasional. Jadi semacam branch, tapi karena mereka ada banyak staff dari staff lokal, input dari staff lokal itu penting sekali, sehingga setiap stasiun daerah mempunyai keunikan tersendiri. Nah, lama-kelamaan dengan undang-undang penyiaran baru, dengan otonomi daerah dan sebagainya, uh, ikatan antara TVR nasional dan TVR daerah menjadi akan lebih longgar 
dibandingkan dulu, dulu erat sekali uh, TVRI nasional memutuskan apa saja untuk semua TVRI lokal, regional juga. Um, ya, tapi masih ada ikatannya, jadi mereka kalau membuat perencanaan acara harus dikirim ke Jakarta dulu untuk di, di cek. Dan juga mereka bertukaran acara. Artinya dari segi etan atau pengusiaran itu mereka memiliki kuasa penuh? Uh, kuasa penuh tidak. So, macam di Malaysia, kadang-kadang ada pintu wilayah yang uh, pergi ke wilayah-wilayah untuk siaran atau kesedihkan daripada wilayah contohnya di Sarawak, uh, Sabah dan uh, wilayah-wilayah lain. Yeah. Tetapi dia hanya satu segmen dalam berita nasional. Yeah. Huh? So, waktu siarannya ada masa sangat um, uh, terhad. Uh, jadi kalau ini, kalau uh, contohnya saya ingin tahu, uh, adakah uh, stesen yang di wilayah itu Ya, ya. Ya. Satu hari itu dia boleh uh, buat program untuk semua ya. cerita um, Ya, beberapa tahun yang lalu mereka boleh um, Waktu zaman Soeharto dan sebelumnya um, TVRI Nasional yang menyiarkan warta berita Dan harus disiarkan juga oleh uh, TVRI Regional Wajib harus Waktu ada televisi swasta, mereka juga wajib menyiarkan warta berita nasional. Jadi hanya ada satu warta berita nasional yang dari TVRI nasional. Tapi lama-kelamaan, TVRI swasta menemukan cara untuk membuat warta berita ringan yang lain daripada warta berita nasional, lama-kelamaan diperbolehkan. Kemudian, tidak harus menyiarkan warta berita nasional lagi. Nah, TVRI, TVRI uh, loka, uh, da dari daerah membuat warta berita mereka sendiri. Tapi akhir-akhir ini mungkin karena mereka kekurangan subsidi menjadi lebih tergantung kepada TVRI nasional lagi. Jadi mereka masih tetap mengisi uh, kalau tidak salah dari jam 2 sampai jam 6 dengan acara-acara yang mereka buat sendiri dengan warta berita berbahasa Jawa warta berita berbahasa Indonesia tapi uh, fokusnya lokal dan macam-macam acara yang mereka buat sendiri dan sebelumnya dan sesudahnya ada siaran yang mereka relay dari Jakarta itu perkembangan baru lagi dan mungkin tidak begitu menyenangkan untuk televisi daerah itu tapi di samping masih ada televisi lokal di mana-mana ya yang yang mereka membuat warta berita sendiri acara-acara sendiri Meskipun demikian, tetap ada Komisi Penyiaran Indonesia yang mengontrol semua uh, penyiaran dan uh, melihat apakah mereka sesuai dengan undang-undang itu tetap ada kontrol. Tapi juga penonton, uh, kalau mereka tidak suka dengan suatu acara karena ada mungkin rasis atau apa mengecekkan agama atau apa, mereka bisa menulis surat ke Komisi Penyiaran Indonesia dan mengeluh dan nanti Komisi akan menganalisisnya, menelitinya dan mungkin mengambil tindakan kalau perlu. Saya rasa uh, pada saya disebabkan oleh itu mungkin uh, pengestarian uh, warisan jawa itu lebih lebih uh, luas berbanding dengan Malaysia. Sebab yeah. Malaysia yang sebab dia dikontrol oleh Uh, TV yang di Malaysia, itu swasta pun ada juga beberapa yang uh, mempunyai satu bos, maksudnya satu ketua yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, jadi uh, rehat a time dia jadi tidak banyak pilihan rancangan yang boleh, mungkin uh, dari segi komisial dia juga kerana mungkin uh, kalau rancangan-rancangan yang berteraskan warisan ini mungkin kurang komisial yang akan masuk dan tidak dapat dan sebagainya saya rasa sebab di Indonesia ada banyak uh, siaran TV lokal yang macam saya cakap tadi maka saya rasa penyelesaian uh, warisan ini lebih banyak boleh dipertontonkan dan dipertontonkan ya, ya dan terutama untuk TV swasta asal menguntungkan itu <laughs> uang itu mereka itu yang paling penting ya asal ada masukan ya mereka mau melestarikan <laughs> kita kitanya asalkan pemerintah untuk <laughs> ya. dan uh, idenya sampai ke mana-mana jadi saya nak cuba ingat balik ini Untuk berapa wayang kulit ini diberhentikan di sini so, Ada yang ingat tak? Ada yang ingat tak? 
masa bumbing shepherd dulu ini orang Inggeris hmm. yang mengkaji makyum dan dekat dengan uh, pemerintah ialah yang memujuk supaya diadakan wayang kulit setelah itu dengan tantangan dari orang agama dengan uh, dari kumpulan-kumpulan lain juga yang menginginkan waktu itu untuk politik yeah. jadi sedikit sampai sekarang tak ada langsung jadi yeah. Yeah, tak ada uh, budaya kita yang diwakil diwakili oleh TV yeah. dan radio juga tak ada jadi orang Malaysia makin hip hop lah ya atau makin apa saya pun tak tahu tapi saya tahu makin kacau makin kacau dan uh, TV sama sekali tidak uh, memperlihatkan budaya kita membantu kita berfikir tentang budaya dan sastra pun tak banyak banyakkan uh, drama yang ringan yang lucu yang mengajar-ngajar orang ya dan tak sesuai sebab juga orang muda ni lari ke sosial media yang lebih menarik, lebih pintar malah yang tidak diarahkan orang lain dan kalau TV itu tak mengurus dirinya dengan baik hampir semua orang akan lari ke media sosial dan ini menjadikan kena terbayar beratus juta untuk TV ini ya, ya, memang ya jadi ya di Indonesia masih banyak kebudayaan memang disiarkan tapi uh, seperti TVRI sebetulnya harus independen karena sekarang menjadi TV publik jadi independen, uh, netral uh, tapi karena mereka kekurangan, kekurangan subsidi uh, membuat alliance dengan uh, pol, uh, partai politik lokal misalnya uh, dan TVRI Jogja ada hubungan dengan uh, partai amanat nasional yang dulu dari Amin Rais, sekarang uh, yang menggantinya anaknya Hanafi Rais memegang Hanafi Rais Center dan mereka mempunyai program dengan uh, kebudayaan tradisional yang sangat disukai orang yang uh, suka berkumpul di masjid atau suka pengajian jadi mereka berbis-bis banyak dibawa ke studio TVRI menyaksikan rekaman acara itu tapi kadang-kadang di dalam acara itu orang disarankan nanti kalau pemilu Sebaiknya kita memilih orang ini atau ini. Jadi netralitasnya sudah tidak terjaga. E, sebaliknya televisi lokal swasta e, juga agak dekat ke TV pemerintah. Jadi ada penggeseran. Jadi TV publik, publik sebetulnya kalau kita menganalisisnya, saya menulis artikel tentang itu e, tahun yang lalu diterbitkan TV publik sebetulnya sekarang tidak 100% bukan 100% TV publik sedangkan TV swasta agak sedikit bergeser ke TV pemerintah tidak tidak begitu 100% menjaga apa identitas yang seharusnya karena di paksa keadaan mungkinnya jadi di Indonesia tidak ada uh, channel Ya, kalau orang di misalnya yang ini bahasa Indonesia, ini bahasa Cina saja, ini bahasa India saja. Ada, ada, ya? ada. Ya, 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 ya. Malah saya baca di koran kemarin nanti akan ada channel dari Arab Saudi, akan, tapi akan uh, siaran di dalam bahasa Indonesia. Oh. Ya, tapi ada, ada. Dulu di zaman Soeharto uh, orang Tionghoa uh, Cina tidak boleh memperlihatkan identitas mereka, mereka di luar jadi apa di toko-toko tidak ada boleh iklan atau tulisan Cina dan sebagainya kalau barong saya tidak boleh di luar di jalan tapi sekarang semua itu boleh jadi juga ada penyiaran di dalam bahasa Cina di dalam bahasa 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 dari India juga malah apa produksi India sangat disukai film-film India itu sangat populer di Indonesia ya boleh dan yang sangat populer sekarang malah uh, dari Korea, oh, Korea. Uh, soap series dari Korea mungkin di sini juga populer yeah. Yeah. soap series dan K-pop ya yeah. musik pop dari Korea ya yeah. sangat populer jadi televisi uh, yang mereka 
Ya biasanya mereka membuat imajinasi tentang penonton mereka dan mereka berpikir bahwa apa yang disajikan kepada penonton harus yang mereka kenal atau yang bisa membuat keakraban itu. Tapi kadang-kadang kami suka menonton yang belum kami kenal ya. Dan ada contoh di Nigeria dulu orang suka menonton seri dari uh, India, seri Hindu latar belakang agama Hindu yang berbahasa saya lupa bahasa dari India dari India sangat disukai di Nigeria karena mereka memberi representasi modernitas yang lain daripada film-film dari Amerika yang mereka sebelumnya nonton dan representasi modernitas itu lebih dekat dengan kebudayaan mereka walaupun agamanya berbeda bahasanya berbeda latar belakang kebudayaan sama sekali berbeda tapi menjadi apa sangat populer di Nigeria itu itu menarik juga menurut saya jadi bukan hanya yang familiar yang menarik perhatian perwakilan budaya semua negara dalam televisyen apakah ada di Vietnam atau di Indonesia selain Indonesia good representation of the country's culture on TV ya mungkin setiap setiap negara mempunyai representasi kebudayaannya di Cina pasti ada, Jepang kuat Kuat, kuat, kuat ya. uh, Kalau saya boleh menjelit uh, Pada saya um, Sebab saya mengikuti juga uh, Cara penyampaian uh, tradisi warisan Korea di TV Jadi pada saya yang berjaya Macam uh, di Korea Daripada rancangan Masterchef yang uh, terkenal di Barat Mereka mencipta satu lagi rancangan K-Chef Maksudnya Korean Chef yang mengetengahkan semua hidangan tradisi berdasarkan bahan asas Korea dan uh, program ni pada saya sangat berjaya sebab uh, setiap uh, uh, chef didatangkan khas, dipilih khas daripada setiap wilayah di Korea dan mereka bertanding menggunakan bahan-bahan yang ada di wilayah mereka tapi mereka perlu menang di peringkat nasional di Korea dan saya rasa program itu sangat uh, menarik dan yang kedua adalah um, Heritage Tomorrow Maknanya Heritage tapi oleh generasi masa depan Dan benda ini uh, banyak kali ditafsirkan dalam uh, dokumentasi uh, di uh, KBS Maknanya rancangan uh, uh, channel di bawah uh, kerajaan Korea Maknanya uh, bagaimana dia memperlihatkan uh, warisan yang mereka ada ini untuk masa depan Maknanya dari segi inovasi, dari segi konservasinya dan dari segi masalah yang dihadapi untuk pelestarian dan sebagainya Saya rasa benda-benda ini yang kurang diketengahkan uh, Sedangkan kita bila cakap pasal Korea je, orang dah senyum-senyum Sebab orang ingat ini pasal K-pop, pasal uh, drama dan sebagainya Tapi pada saya, saya melihatnya dari perspektif yang berbeza uh, Pada saya, mereka berjaya melestarikan warisan mereka di televisyen Malah menarik penonton di bawah 40-an dan di atas 40-an untuk sama-sama uh, me, 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 menyemarakkan atau menyukai, mencintai warisan mereka semua Itu kenapa saya eh, Menarik sekali, ibu menulis tentang itu? Saya tidak menulis tapi saya uh, memperhatikan uh, kalau, kalau saya, kalau even anak saya pun kalau saya buka cerita itu dia dah tahu dah Ini uh, TV Mama Ini TV Mama sebab uh, dia malam tadi saya kenapa Mama suka tengok TV ini Maka saya cakap sebab dia menceritakan tentang warisan, tentang uh, kehidupan masyarakat di sana dan sebagainya Yang pada saya berjaya disampaikan sebab saya daripada negara lain Saya daripada bangsa lain yang bercakap dalam bahasa yang lain Sedangkan rancangan itu ber, de, disampaikan naratifnya dalam bahasa Korea Tetapi kita boleh mengikutinya uh, Dan malah ada, uh, malah bukan Malaysia saja, negara lain pun ada membincangkan tentang perkara tersebut Maka saya berjaya untuk zaman sekarang Oh, Kita boleh berdiri di sini ya Dan nak monitor bincang tadi 
dan sayang tak ada orang televisi di sini. Ada media, ada media, ada media. Di mana? Di mana? Ada metro, ada metro. Koran, koran ada metro. Semua ini boleh kita pelajari dan kembangkan lagi diri kita yang sekarang saya rasa agak sempit dan digunakan hanya untuk politik. Tidak mempunyai lagi. Terima kasih banyak sekali lagi dan saya serahkan kepada Marah untuk menutup perbincangan ini. Nah, terima kasih kepada Prof. Muhammad Haji Saleh mempunyai sesi ini dan kita beri tepukan yang kewajian uh, kepada dan saya percaya wacana ini walaupun mungkin agak uh, ringkas ya, tapi sebenarnya bagi saya dia memperlihatkan ruang uh, penyelidikan ya, yang boleh dibuat oleh para uh, penyelidik khususnya pelajar undergraduate lah, ya, yang, yang para siswa azah terjana untuk melihat satu aspek dalam dalam media ya, membuat kajian bagaimana warisan itu uh, dapat dipelihara bagaimana amalan yang kita buat ini dalam TV-TV di Malaysia ni maupun media sosial besok boleh jadikan satu apa nama tajuk untuk buat master ataupun PhD hanya dalam bidang media ya, dari sudut hidden messages ataupun uh, apa nama nilai-nilai yang tersembunyi di sebalik paparan-paparan uh, yang dalam media ini ini memang menarik ya. mungkin belum Diteroka lagi secara teliti Tapi uh, kita nampak cabang-cabang Dalam penyelidikan yang boleh dibuat Baik, jadi kita ucap terima kasih Kepada semua yang dapat hadir Dan terima kasih kepada pihak media yang datang uh, Terima kasih sekali lagi Dan kita ada sedikit cendera mata Untuk diberikan kepada Untuk pekat ya? Jadi uh, boleh kita okay, Ini cendera mata Tenang-tenangan Prof. Ah, ada ini ada sedikit, 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 ada sed